Hello, Chase Pelagia here bringing you a review of the Keybar USMC fighting knife. Uh, this knife has a lot of history behind it. It was originally designed in the late 1800s, but it didn't really become renowned until uh, the, the um, US Marines adopted it as its uh, fighting and utility knife. Um, some of the, the history behind it, I mean, how it got its name, I thought that was an interesting story. There was a fur trapper that was out checking his traps. Uh, long story short, he um, ran across a bear that ended up attacking him. And I guess um, it's unclear what happened, but his gun jammed, and he had to use his knife to kill this bear. He was so moved by this that he um, decided to write the company a testimonial. And um, when they were reading it, they said that the letter was in broken English. And um, when they came across the letters K-A-B-A-R, they deciphered it as kill a bear. And that's what K-Bar stands for. I thought that was kind of an interesting story. But uh, getting into the primary purpose of this knife, um, it, it's marketed as, like I said, a fighting and utility knife. Um, I've never really been an advocate of uh, knife fighting, and frankly it doesn't even really interest me. So this review is going to be based around the utility part of it. Um, this is going to be a great outdoor blade. Um, really camping, hiking, um, anything like that, it's, it's going to suit you well. Um, I did testing on my own, and I really I did everything with it from uh, batoning wood, to making fuzz sticks, really everything in between, and it worked really well for me. And and that's where this the choice is. Um, it's going to be a good choice because it's just an all-around good knife, kind of the the jack of all trades, if you will. But um, anyway, the the blade itself is made uh, right here in the U.S. of A. Uh, in Olean, New York. It's stamped as such uh, right on the tang. Um, and it is a full tang design, which means that the blade runs the entire length into the handle. And you can see uh, the pommel kind of sticking out the, the bottom there. Um, see, so your, your factory angle on this, as it comes from the factory, is a... Uh, it's going to be a 40 degree inclusive angle, which means that it's going to be 20 degrees per side. Now, um, one thing you'll find out that they are, they can be a little bit messed up. You might get one a little askew, uh, just like any other um, production knife company, that, that sort of stuff is going to happen, but it's not a big deal. They do come, uh, normally they come razor sharp right out of the box, and, and that is nice. The design here, this is a clip point design, as you can see with uh, the swedge that is unsharpened. From what I understand, um, in the military, it was common practice for them to, to sharpen that. Um, you know, I suppose to, to save their cutting edge and maybe for better penetration uh, when thrusting. But um, here we have uh, the uh, fuller, what they call the fuller, some refer to it as the, the blood groove. That is, uh, it's for weight savings on the blade, and from what I understand, it also adds uh, rigidity to, to the blade itself. Um, yeah, we have our, our guard here, um, and then this, this particular version is the stacked leather handle. Um, it feels great in hand, very nice, and then the, uh, let's see here, and then you can see that the tang is pinned um, right there. But the, the blade itself is uh, what we call a saber ground uh, blade. You can see that the grind starts midway up the spine here, as opposed to a full flat grind, which would start from, from the spine and gradually decrease all the way to the edge. But the saber grind is just going to make a good all-around knife. Um, it's going to add you know, to its strength, and it's just going to do everything you know, really well. And I think that's what they were going for when they designed this blade. Um, the uh, the length of the blade is a seven inch blade, and the overall length is uh, eleven and three quarters. Uh, the thickness is 0.165, and the the overall weight is um, ten point four ounces. Let's see if I can get that right. Um, 
The uh, the steel is made out of a 10 uh, 1095 Crovan steel. The Crovan it stands for uh, chromium, which is going to aid in uh, uh, corrosion resistance, and vanadium is going to help with your edge retention. But uh, 1095 is just a good it's just a good all around steel. It is high carbon. Um, it is not a stainless steel, however. So if it does get wet, your blade gets wet, you're going to want to wipe it down or perhaps even keep it oiled. Um, they do offer um, different variations out there. Um, this, for instance, this is the, the D2. This is called the D2 Extreme here. Um, it's made out of a D2 tool steel, which is going to be even a higher carbon option than the regular 1095. So it's going to be harder. Um, there is more corrosion resistance. I think it's chromium comes in at right around 12%. I think uh, it needs to be at 13% to be considered a stainless blade. So, so it's pretty close to stainless. You can see with the D2 version that they beefed up uh, the guard here and, and the pommel as well. And that's going to add uh, a couple ounces in the overall weight um, as opposed to the original version. The one gripe I have with this knife, this particular knife, is that they um, they only come in a partially serrated knife, um, which you know I'm I'm a I personally would uh, recommend uh, a straight edge blade for um, for outdoors work. But if uh, you're you're cutting any sort of uh, synthetic materials like uh, rope, like fibrous materials, um, even hosing. Uh, synthetic materials of any kind, those serrations will really come in handy. Uh, one thing I do like about K-Bar serrations though is they are not jagged, um, which is, it's really nice because um, other manufacturers have a really jagged serration and, it, and it's not really conducive to um, uh, you know cutting rope and stuff. But anyway, um, this knife is just, this is a fantastic knife. I mean, both of them are. But this one, uh, it's going to come at uh, not quite twice the price, but it is more expensive. Great all-around blade, though. Um, and then, of course, we have the, the Kraton handled version. This is a 1095, so um, for all intents and purposes, it's this exact blade here, except with the Kraton handle. And I like the Kraton. It makes for a really nice uh, grip. One thing I noticed is when I got it wet, it, it actually seemed to mildly enhance the grip. And this, this particular knife was kind of the workhorse of my testing, as you can probably tell. And it did really well in, in all of its testing. Frankly, I was surprised. Um, the one thing I noticed, though, between the two blades is um, the, uh, the uh, I'm sorry, the uh, leather version is just a little bit uh, thinner and it's also a little bit longer too. Um, that could be a good or bad thing depending on where you're coming from. Um, I really like the look of the um, of the leather but uh, the Kraton's nice because it's going to work in any environments wet or otherwise and it makes for a great grip. So um, for functionality you know really I guess you could go with either one. Um, the Kraton is probably just a better all-around choice though. They do come in different colors uh, as well. This is the, the foliage green version right here. Uh, this is an unused blade. This is just, like I said, this is the same as both of these knives. It's just in a different color. Um, but they're, they're just great knives. But um, as far as, um, let's see here, the sheath options. Um, we'll use this is the the uh, this isn't a kydex. This is a molded, uh, I guess, glass-filled nylon. And what's nice about it is it's not going to retain moisture if if you're out and about. And this the sheath is really well executed. And one thing I liked about it is um, its retention. It snaps right in and it doesn't go anywhere. And that's without additional loops. I actually tuck my uh, snaps uh, behind the. The, uh, the loop here because they're not necessary. You can see the, the holes in it. It's, uh, it makes for um, a good way to strap it to a pack or uh, any sort of gear like that. Just overall um, a well executed sheath. This is, uh, this is your, your belt loop right here. It is a little thick if you're using a standard belt but not a big deal. This is your, um, I think this is for a drop down holster on your, on your leg. I'm not quite sure. But um, overall, well-executed sheath. I like it much more 
than K-Bar's uh, leather sheath. Now this, this sheath is actually for um, what they call the big brother, but this is uh, going to be indicative of what the normal sheath looks like. This is just a little bigger version. Um, I don't, honestly, I don't really care for it. Um, it's functional, I guess, in its purpose, but um, it's just, you know, it, it's just, it is what it is, I guess. Uh, speaking of the the big brother here, here's that. Uh, great blade. I haven't really had a chance to um, to do a lot of testing on it. I have done some testing on uh, on Thanksgiving. I really like the the first thing I noticed with this is how just nimble and agile this is in hand for a nine inch blade. Um, it just fits your hand really well. It's actually the same size uh, hand as the normal K-Bar. Uh, you just get another two inches of blade. And you can see they put the serrations on the spine there. And I like that, actually. I don't really care for uh, serrated blades, but this is out of the way here. And that could probably save your cutting edge in some applications. And I like that they didn't put the serrations all the way down here, so it leaves plenty of room for batoning. But all around, uh, a great choice for a knife. I've I've really liked. Uh, I like this one. Now getting on to this is the key bar short here. This is going to be 75% of the the size of the the regular version here. Um, so it's scaled down 25% really in in every way. Uh, it's it's a great little knife. It's going to pair well with your big brother or maybe your K bar heavy Bowie. Um, if you do have uh, big, large hands, you might not like this so much. I really like it. This is a, a great little knife. Um, it's good for, for smaller stuff, but it's going to handle anything you're going to throw at it except for, you know, large batoning. But um, it's really, it's just the same knife, just scaled down here. But those, um, that's most of the variations as far as K-Bar is concerned. I really, I just have an affinity for K-Bars. They're, they're just an excellent knife. They've been trusted for, for decades in the hands of um, military to the occasional camper. And if you're in the market for a knife, I would strongly recommend looking toward, uh, looking at a K-Bar. Just because, um, like I said, they're trusted, not to mention they're about as uh, American as, as apple pie. And they're going to do anything that that you can realistically throw at them. Uh, one thing that that I forgot to mention was uh, they, it's all also offered in a, a Tanto version. This is the clip point, obviously, as we established. The Tanto version is it's going to be a stronger tip. Um, I like the the belly of the clip point. The one nice thing about the Tanto though is you get an extra inch on your blade, so that could be a good. Or, or bad thing, but I've never been disappointed with any of K-Bar's products. They they just um, all around their their heat treat seems to be holding up. I like their steel choices. Um, working with them as a company or some of their distributors, <laughs> excuse me, distributors ha has been a pleasure too. I just there's nothing I can say wrong about this. Like I said, if you just need a good knife. For, that's just going to be a jack of all trades. I would say look no further than K Bar. But that's my review of the K Bar USMC Fighting Knife and its variants. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, leave a comment. Um, again, thanks for your time and have a good day.